<laughs> yes, I mean, the, obviously there is a carbon impact of the manufacturer. I'm thinking that you're talking about photovoltaics. Yes. So that there will be a, a payback time, both in terms of the cost and also the carbon consumed. But I think as long as you have a well-produced product, ultimately if you look after it and it, it generates electricity for not one decade but two decades perhaps, then you're going to get a payback that outweighs the company invested in the first place and the financial investment that you've made. What point does that It depends on the system. I mean, Mary, could you like, say something about the got And in a really large array here on, on the main building um, that's on the roof of St. Clark C most of it. So, yeah, we that's going to have a payback yeah, time. Yeah, we're going to 8.16 kilowatts photovoltaics a year. Um, which does about 15 to 20 percent of our electricity demand. It was funded 100 um, percent by grant funding, so in terms of we didn't earn the money to buy them. Um, and in terms of financial payback, that is quite a long period of time. Um, but in terms of carbon payback, it's quite short. Um, so it's about weighing up the benefits, really. I think also it's really important to say that it's about applying the appropriate technology to the appropriate problem. Yeah. So it very much depends on what your application is and whether it's appropriate. So it's much more appropriate to insulate your house first and to put focus on the grid because that is going to save energy to you. Um, so, and also there is never going to be a silver bullet that's going to solve our problems in, in the planet. So I think there's also often a lot of talk about what is the solution to the problem. There isn't one solution, there's a multiplicity of, of, of solutions that will combine to, to help us to move forward, so think about appropriate technologies. But if you want to read in, in detail an article which is a case study, two case studies about uh, putting photovoltaics on a house, um, issue 67 over there, it's got this uh, permaculture magazine, it's got a, an up-to-date case study um, looking at um, the feeding tariffs as well, which are pretty sort of changing all the time. But, um, so, there's a case there. Sorry, John. Yeah, John. Well, no, 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 it's uh, kind of an, an additional point, really, but I recently interviewed Dale Vince, who is self styled ex heavy who runs Ecoelectricity, the green electricity company. And he made the argument, I have no reason to disbelieve him, that for pound per pound, his large on land wind turbines get a lot more electricity than anyone's solar panels on the roof. So, what, so, he had a bit of a problem. He had lots of planning permission for wind turbines. He didn't have enough money to put them up. He didn't want to go to the banks because he hates the banks. He didn't want to lend them anyway. So he did a bond issue where he would say to people who might not anyway be able to afford a whole solar array on there, if he would say, you know, give us only, I can't remember what it was, 200 pounds, and you'll be contributing towards large-scale installation of wind turbines, which may be more efficient in money terms and to generate more more quickly. So it's always worth looking at lots of different terms. But that's a way for people who can't afford a whole array, which I couldn't, to think, well, actually, this is kind of a proxy. This is a, a way of doing my bit without actually having to spend so much.